I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comics and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Deathstroke Annual Issue Number One. Is Slade Wilson ready to return to his villainous roots, and why? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alrighty then. So this comic, interestingly enough, opens up with Tanya Spears, aka Power Girl Two. She's been roused in the night after having a terrible nightmare involving her former mentor, Karen Starr, aka the original Power Girl. These nightmares almost honestly seem to be more of a premonition, with Power Girl claiming that she's trapped somewhere and trying to return. This deep affects Tanya because, well, she's been Power Girl for so long now, if the old one was to return, what would she be besides nothing? This existential crisis pushes Tanya to do some very out-of-character things, like almost to the point where you could call this character assassination, but wait till the end. You see, ever since this Defiance team got put together by Deathstroke's wife, Tanya has had a crush on Jericho, only she doesn't know about his sexual orientation. And when the very devoutly Christian Tanya sees sees Jericho with a very handsome midnight collar, she decides to file a complaint with Jericho's mother. Rightly so, she gets told off and hard for being a gigantic hypocrite. If what Jericho does with his personal life is a problem for you, yet all the people that Slade has killed and governments that he's toppled doesn't register with you, the problem might be you, young lady. As we discover, Tanya actually had no idea what Deathstroke was doing behind the scenes, and she is equally shocked and traumatized by this turn of events, so much to the point she decides to throw herself in the arms of Wally West too, in hopes of finding some sort of comfort. Here's the thing though, Wally rebuffs her saying, hey, I like you, but not this way. Furthermore, Kid Flash is packing up to leave. He got invited back to go join the Teen Titans and he says maybe he can put in a good word with Damien for Power Girl. Wally's not the only one leaving too. Rose ran off in the previous issue and Jericho says he's heading back to LA. All he wanted to do was to settle the murder of his fiance and seeing as that never happened, he's also out. He's also pretty damn mad at Tanya for being so close-minded and judgmental, and with that, pretty much all of Defiance ends up falling apart. Tanya seeming to blame herself for the way things went. Of course, as all of this personal drama stuff goes down, no one tells Deathstroke, who is in the field on the next mission, that his backup just went kaput. Slay's next mission, as we discover, is trying to get back a very important missile guidance system that was sold off to a Martin Skelly-style billionaire who made a bunch of money in pharmaceuticals by screwing people over. Slade is still trying to not kill people, but when he finds out that the evil millionaire hired a super-powered bodyguard who totally looks like the Punisher, by the way, he engineers it so the dude gets shot. Hey, right, it's not murder if you don't pull the trigger, right? It's really only manslaughter. In the end, his backup turns out to only be Terra, the last person he wants to be alone with, especially because he assumes that Terra was only made to join the team at the behest of his wife to try and screw him over. Deathstroke also doesn't have use of his fancy icon suit anymore, which means when the millionaire gets the drop on him with a gun, Deathstroke's instincts take over and he shoots the guy in self-defense. Slade is also not exactly sure how he should feel about this, whether he enjoys enjoyed it or not. Deathstroke barely has any time to process any of this either because Kid Flash comes to him with revenge in his eyes. Apparently, as we discover, Tanya took her own life back at the base and Kid Flash blames Slade. The particulars surrounding the suicide too are also pretty fishy. Power Girl was super strong and super resistant, meaning that only she could have built a device capable of taking her own life. But she sure didn't seem the suicidal type. Slade ends up blaming his wife, saying that she should have been a better den mother watching over all the emotions of the young teammates. Adeline fires back at him, saying he's poison and that everyone around him gets hurt. Then she hits him, Slade hits her back, and they end up having sex. This scene clearly meaning to be evocative of Slade and Adeline losing their own child and Tanya being yet another young person who died under their watch. With the Defiance team officially dead, Slade and Tara round up all their gear and decide to bury it out in tribal country. Deathstroke even choosing to revert back to his old class classic black and orange costume. Oh, but wait, that's not it. There's one last twist yet to be seen. You see, Tanya Spears didn't actually kill herself. She was a smart super genius, and she ended up building a device that allowed her to reach whatever dimension Power Girl was stuck in. Or, at the very least, allowed her to project her consciousness there. The only problem is, is that when Kid Flash picked up her body, he ended up disconnecting her from the machine, which means both Power Girls are now stuck together. And yeah, that's Deathstroke Annual Issue Number 1 everybody, and honestly, it goes to a lot of places I was really not expecting it to. And I don't only just mean the Power Girl stuff, although
although that was fascinating and really unexpected to see in the pages of a Deathstroke book of all things, but I'm talking about the other places it goes. I mean, Christopher Priest has always been known for infusing his work with a lot of really adult, really mature ideas. And this one is super no different. They go to some super dark, messed up places, but you know what, for a character like Deathstroke, I would expect no less. I know I've mentioned it elsewhere too, but I think it bears repeating. Did you know Christopher Priest is an actual, real, ordained priest in real life, and yet he writes all this super dark, super mature stuff? All in all, I think if you've been following the Deathstroke book for as long as I have, I think this one will most definitely impress you. I know I was impressed. I'd give this one a 9 out of 10. It was good. So that was Deathstroke Annual, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other videos I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you always know what's coming out next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, please, by all means, check out my Patreon page. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for a dollar a month, and you can find that down in the description. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.